Hey everyone, so I do have this, uh, I guess, modeling discussion and I was thinking about this question, you know, for quite some time now and coincidentally it was, you know, discussed in Skype. So as the title stated, it's the fear of modding or customizing your Gundam model kits or Gumpla. So this is going beyond uh, out of the box or most people call it OTB, out of the box build and, you know, actually this is such as you know painting it you know with Tamiya paints you know, acrylic or spray spray painting it um, drilling super gluing that kind of thing or even scribing so something that you know changes the kit completely from you know just assembling it and I'll go ahead and I'll, I do have these uh, different reasons why we don't try it and reasons why we should try it and how does one start? So I'm just gonna break it down in those three. So first off, reasons why we don't try it. And you know, this goes for you know majority of the begin beginners who are just you know starting their collection or they probably have a collection already but you know they're just building it out of the out of the box. And also for those intermediate like myself, you know, I do have this fear sometimes, especially when I'm you know starting something new that I'm not uh, not familiar it with yet. So, I guess the first one is the projecting the future and, you know, end up failing. Because, uh, you always have this fear for some reason, uh, you know, as humans that we're scared of to do, try something new. Because, uh, we might fail. And leading to that fail is, you know, the second reason is price. Because, um, I guess for, for some of us, you know, some actually modelers will use a you know super deform or a first grade because they're relatively cheap, and if you screw up, that's fine. But for me, um, I actually really like super deform, and sometimes I'm <laughs> kind of scared of you know messing it up, even though it's you know relatively cheap. I can just get another one. But um, I always have this mentality that you know why would I buy the same kit if I can get a different one, right? So for like this one is my favorite Gundam Alex. This one I hardly you know, customize it. I didn't put, you know, a different uh, color scheme on this one. I just added details and that's pretty much it. And I'm quite content on this one. But, you know, this is different from other kits I have that I actually went, uh, you know, to a certain extent to paint. Like my Sangoku and kits. Uh, that kind of deal. So that's the price. And the other thing, you know, people might consider is it's too much work. Uh, like this one, the resin kit right here. It does take a lot of work and a, a lot of prepping, you know, um, a lot of things to consider. And that might, you know, deter people from getting it. And actually, this one is a, <laughs> it's the price and it's a lot of work. So people, you know, try to not to do them. So those are the things that I think are, you know, reasons why we don't try it. But uh, here are but here's my reasons that we should try it. For one, it's adding value. Um, if you got a kit, you know, out of the box, let's say a super deform, that's eight bucks, right? When you start building it, actually, when you build a kit, <laughs> the value of it just goes down dramatically. So, uh, out of box build like this one, this the Aquarius. Unless it's a really hard to find kit like this one, you might, you know, have some value, but. Let's just say you get it, you have a shining Gundam like this one. You know, it's still around, and you know this is eight bucks. But once you build it, it's pretty much you know maybe two dollars or one dollar. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, when you customize this or actually painted it, like uh, the ones I've done with my Sangoku kit or even my Kabuto right there, once it's painted, um, you know it's worth more now, or depending on its price, but. It's not just a mere kit anymore. It's you know, it's your own custom work. So you you put your work on it, and it's pretty much adding value to it. If you get what I'm trying to say, and as well as it keeps you entertained, because um, like um, you know, f for me, or you know, for, actually, if you you kind of notice on other people that when they build a kit, okay, that's one, finished it, put it there, oh, build another one, finish, put it there. Then you find yourself buying kits and pretty much filling up your desk. And you're just gonna have this habit of buying a kit and building, doing anything with it. So, 
that's it. I mean, the 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 fun of that, you know, ends once you display your kit because you're going to be moving on the next one, right? So, if you do modeling or actually, you know, try painting it or scribing it, it's actually adding, you know, time. Like, uh, it actually keeps you entertained for a little bit because painting does take a lot of time, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> you know, I recently painted my uh, Double Zeta and it took me, uh, you know, a whole night. Or sometimes I, it takes me three days to paint a kit. And it keeps me entertained, you know. It's like, um, I, I do modeling instead of, you know, playing video games. But, you know, it keeps me entertained. And another thing, you know, um, you should try it. It's you learn something new, and for one, you know when I got my shining Gundam, this one, I mean the main or actually the main con of the kit is the shoulder armor. It doesn't give you much give. You can only move it, you know, 45 degree angle. But you know, um, I went ahead and challenged myself to you know modify or actually mod the armor, and now I can have you know 90 degrees. A lot, uh, a lot more, and that's actually, you know, interesting. That I went ahead and, you know, challenged myself to do that, and I guess that's another reason why I mod things. Um, if I find something missing, you know, I'll try to fix that if it's possible. And I guess another reason we should do it it's boost up your creativity or actually resourcefulness, like what I've done with this one. And I guess it's also very rewarding because once you finish a kit, uh, I don't have my pen show, see what it sounds to be right now, but, or, you know, from my goes with everyone who finished their paint in their kit, it's something that, you know, they can be proud of, something they can share, you know, the Gumbla community and you get, um, you know, comments, you know, good comments. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's something, um, you know, it's, I guess, you get um, an exponential because when you get a kit, once you build it, you know, display it, you're the only one, you know, um, enjoying it. But, you know, once you customize it and you're able to share it with everyone and they, you know, hey, that's something different. That's something cool. And, you know, they, they give you props for doing it. So in return, you get, you know, a lot more, I guess, a lot more bang for your buck if you modify your kit. And I guess the third part is how this how do you how how does one start? You know, when do I start modding? You know, how do I break this fear? I guess for me, um I guess I got lucky because I was actually uh my previous hobby was stick fuss and that pretty much the hobby is forced me to customize my kits. And but when I got to Gumpla, it actually took me a while because in stick fuss I actually have a a lot of repeats. Uh, kits so I can you know kit bash them um, but for when I started Gumpla you know I mean yeah Gumpla I only have one the, like the Alex or my Blaze Aqua Phantom I only have one of that and I'm I'm scared of you know messing up but um, I thought to myself you know I I only have that and you know might as well make it you know improve it and also I I end up you know buying kits that I don't really like so that one of them is the uh, Zaku 3 from the Sun Goku then I didn't like it and I pretty much modified that and you know it actually turned out pretty good my Zaku 3 I call it the Zikai and I guess another thing that you know push it to customize is a contest <laughs> and I guess another thing will be if you broke something yep Sometimes when you broke a joint, you end up, you know, trying to fix that. And in a way, that's actually customizing it. You know, I've broken several joints here and there. And you're trying to figure out, you know, what's a good replacement for that? How can you make it better? So that's, you know, a um, couple of, you know, reasons why, uh, how you get started. And another thing, when you do plan to uh, customize your kits, um, you gotta use the right tools. Um, it really helps although you know you can be resourceful you know you can cut corners you know using you know like wire cutters and pliers I mean instead of those flat pliers or you know other things 
I can't think right now. <laughs> but you know, the shortcuts. You know, it works to a certain extent, but um, I ha actually highly recommend you guys, you know, actually finding the right tools and get comfortable with them. And it will save you a lot of trouble later on. And I think that's about it. I probably missed a couple of, you know, topics here and there, but um, I think that's it. A good way to end the uh, discussion and I would like to you know uh, hear you guys comments um, or, if you have, uh, or your response actually and it will be great if you do a video response to this you know again what's your uh, what's your fear on modeling you know when you first started you know what, what goes into your mind like should I paint it and you know and work up your discussion to the and to the part that you know what made you break that fear? What made you, you know start modeling? And yeah, I would like to you know hear that that you know the thought process you got to that. So I guess that's about it. Else I'm gonna you know rumble on. <laughs> so again, um, thank you very much for you know listening to my discussion. So until then, this is me. Thank you for watching.